Hey, what's up everybody? John Lang here again. In July of last year I did a video on my picks for the top five worst snubs by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And it's been pretty well received. A lot of people agree with my picks and I got a really good amount of comments from people with bands that they think should be included and haven't been. So I've kind of been compiling those and, and seeing which ones I agreed with, which ones I didn't. And since they just released the nominees for 2022, I thought I would go ahead and update my list and I, I would make it a lot more comprehensive this time and do the top 25. And I am glad to say that Pat Benatar, who was my number one pick from the last video, did get into the Hall of Fame. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see Judas Priest get in. Glad to see Duran Duran get in. Although I'm a little bit puzzled why they're putting in bands from the 80s when there's so many bands from the 60s and 70s still that haven't even been nominated yet. I should say Pat Benatar wasn't just nominated, she was she will be inducted. So anyway, here's my picks for the top 25. And I'm gonna move a lot more quickly this time. I'm not gonna try to sell you on each band. I think most of these bands are household names, so I'm not gonna tell you everything they did. Number 25, Meatloaf. Just a, a stellar career, really had his own brand of theatrical rock. Unfortunately, he passed away in January of this year, so um, he, he won't be able to see it in his lifetime, but I, I do hope that he'll be in, inducted sometime soon. Number 24, Steppenwolf. And I, I think one of the things that really stands out for them is the fact that he used the phrase heavy metal thunder in, in Born to be Wild, which has really spawned the name of a whole genre of music. Uh, you know, it's, there, it's debatable whether that was the first time the phrase was used or not. I, I think it was the first time it was used in a song at any rate. But I, I do think Steppenwolf, you know, with Born to be Wild and Magic Carpet Ride, a lot of other good songs, I think they deserve to be in. Number 23, The Grass Roots. And these guys been around, they were around for a long time, like from 1965 they originated, and just their their list of hits is just incredible. Live for the day, sooner or later, midnight confessions, just really good vocals, good harmonies that I just think they need to be in. Number 22, good old Ted Nugent, Uncle Ted. And whether or not you agree with his politics, Ted has been around since the early 60s. He originally started out with Ted, with the Ambor Dukes, and before he started doing his solo career, just really in the, in the 70s, was just a monster live in concert. Just He had the art of feedback on the guitar down to a science, and he just put on a good show. He, he toured relentlessly back then. Deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Number 21, Three Dog Night. Once again, dating back to the 60s, late 60s, these guys started. And a lot of a lot of memorable hits that they came out with. You know, they, they were just staples on the top 40 back in the early 70s, mid 70s. Just deserved to be in. All right, number 20, Ario Speedwagon. Once again, been around since the late 60s, even before Kevin Cronin started singing for the band. They were doing their first album, and I, I like the singer they had before him, too. Terry Luttrell was an excellent singer. Just some good rock and roll. Gary Richrath always laid down some fantastic guitar parts. It, it was a shame to lo lose him, but they're still out there today touring and Reliving the hits. I, I think they deserve to be in. Number 19, Peter Frampton. And of course his blockbuster album Frampton Live was just a staple of radio back in the 70s. Still is a staple on classic rock stations. And Peter of course goes clear back to Humble Pie before his solo album. Just, I think he was just an icon in the 70s and deserves to be in. Number 18, I'm going to let my t-shirt give you a little hint here, UFO. I included them in my last video. None of my feelings about them had changed. I still think they were just um, 
originators of a whole genre of music. Michael Schenker just always blew me away. I, I love his lyrical guitar playing. Deserved to be in. Number 17, and, and kind of closely related, Scorpions. And of course the Schenker brothers were, were staples of hard rock and heavy metal back in the day, and they, they taught a lot of people how to do it. They, they have a lot of people that emulated them. Scorpions are still around today, still doing it, still sound as good as ever. They should be in. Number 16, Montrose. Once again, they were included in my original video on this subject. Uh, you know, Ronnie Montrose was just a monster. Just wrote that first Montrose album was just unbelievably good songs. Not a bad song on the album. On a lot of people's all-time favorite rock albums lists, I would include them. Number 15, America. Just really pioneered acoustic rock back in the early 70s in the vein of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young and that type of music. They, they gave their own spin to it, had a lot of hits, really were all over radio back in the early to mid 70s. Need to be in that Hall of Fame, people. Number 14, Uriah Heep. Uriah Heep, maybe not a whole lot, a whole ton of hits. They've had a couple of them, but just a stellar career. Ton of albums they put out, particularly their first few albums. And I think of like The Magician's Birthday it was just a huge album. You can really spend a lot of time going through their catalog and hearing a lot of good stuff. They deserve to be in. Number 13, Blue Oyster Cult. Their double live record was just huge for them. Had a few hits. Of course, Don't Fear the Reaper is just a staple. One of the biggest classic rock songs. And of course, the Saturday Night Live skit with more cowbell. <laughs> I'm sure they're still seeing royalties from that after all this time. But just a lot of good albums, kind of concept albums. They didn't just have the old My Baby Left Me lyrics. It was some deeper thought going on with them. I just really like their stuff, like the artwork for their albums. I think they should be in. Number 11, Iron Maiden. Heavy metal at its, at its finest, very popular worldwide, just massively popular all across the globe. They can sell out stadiums and the fact that they've been doing it for so long should be in. Number 10, The Guess Who. A lot of good songs. These guys from Canada just kept writing hit after hit back in the 70s. They were not to be denied. They spun off some other groups, of course, like Bachman Turner Overdrive. Really good stuff. I don't know why they've never been mentioned for the Hall of Fame, but they should be. Number nine, Thin Lizzy. And of course, Phil in it was a driving force. Had a number of stellar guitar players play for them over the years was just a breeding ground for guitarists that would go on and have a successful career afterwards and just a lot of good songs that Phil wrote. He uh, unfortunately is no longer with us. I wish he was. I think Thin Lizzy still tours and has a replacement for him. Um, at this point I would just consider them a tribute band but I just uh, think they should be in. Number eight, Jethro Tull. And of course, Ian pioneered the use of flute in rock and roll. Not that it had never been done before, but he made it a way of life. Took songs that were good songs to begin with and elevated them with the flute. And of course, his vocals were very distinctive. Of course, they won the Grammy for heavy metal, I think it was one time, which was a big joke for everybody because they don't really play heavy metal. But I, I think they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Number seven, Grand Funk Railroad. Once again, big in the early 70s, just a lot of big hits, just songs that are just memorable memorable to this day. I don't think that they should have been ignored. I don't think they should be never mentioned. I think they should be in there. It shouldn't even be, be a question at this point. Number six, Boston. When you consider the fact that these guys have sold over 75 million albums worldwide. That that first album was just huge. And of course the mastermind was Tom Schultz. Spent hours upon hours upon hours perfecting the music. 
so much so that he was wearing the tape out. I'm sure you probably heard that story, but so many good songs. Of course, More Than a Feeling is just a staple of classic rock radio. Once again, they should be there. Number five, and I mentioned these guys on my last video, Kansas. I feel like they pioneered their brand of rock, kind of taken from the likes of Yes and things like that, but they, they gave it their own spin and just the songwriting was incredible. Karen Libgreen was an unbelievable songwriter, good multi-instrumentalist. Steve Walsh, the vocals were just through the roof. They should be in. Number four, Bad Company. And in particular, Paul Rogers' bluesy vocals just to this day have really stood the test of time. They have a lot of songs that are played relentlessly on radio still. And of course, he had a career before Bad Company. He's still around to this day, still sounds as good as ever. So I would make them a strong candidate. Number three, Sticks. And once again, these guys have been around for a long time, had a few member changes, still touring to this day with with Tommy and James Young. Maybe they don't have Dennis to Young anymore, but Lawrence Gallon does a, a nice job of singing his parts. I kind of wish they'd get together and do a reunion at some point, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. But just so many big songs. It's just unbelievable that they haven't been mentioned, haven't been nominated. Number two, and once again, these guys were on my last list, Foreigner. Unbelievable amount of hits, unbelievable amount of albums sold, top 40 hits. Lou Graham is just one of the world's best singers back in his day, just what was the epitome of a rock vocalist. Once again, still touring, although at this point, no original members, so I, I would consider them more of a tribute band, but sound really good still with the people they got and last but not least and i don't know why i didn't include these guys on my last list i should have they're one of my favorite bands anyway it's toto and of course these guys studio musicians from the start they played on so many albums to list them all would would take half the day and and it's just a who's who of people that they played with but their songs in particular their albums They've had different singers, Bobby Kimball, Joseph Williams. Of course, there are a lot of people that just think Toto and they think Africa and Rosanna. Well, they've got a whole catalog of songs that are just incredible. Still touring to this day, still putting out new music. I just don't know why they're not considered. They've won Grammys for Toto 4 because it was such a fantastic album. I don't know why they wouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Anyway, that's my list of top 25. There, there's still people that could have been mentioned. I understand that. I just can't mention everybody because I, I don't want to have this video be 30 minutes long. But I appreciate you taking the time to listen and I'd love to hear your suggestions. Once again, it's John Lang. Thanks a lot. Take care.